So this is what life feels like to me sometimes. Oh, that's a very bad idea. Yo, what's up? My name is Jarrell Watkins. At least for the time being it is. And I'm about to do some crazy, wild, unconventional shit to try to change my life. Nothing's working for me. This is what I got to eat my breakfast with. ...where there was a shootout between six police officers and the suspect. A block party shooting that left one person dead and 11 others hurt. It happened in Brownsville on Saturday night near Christopher and Hedgeman Avenues. The man who was... So, you ever hear cinema folklore about method actors who struggle to get out of character after filming? Imagine you're an actor leaving a movie set on the last day of shooting. You say your goodbyes to the producers and the co-stars and you go home. Suddenly you realize you just don't feel like yourself. You're still thinking, moving, speaking, and behaving like your character in the movie. You can't shake it. Something profound is occurring in your brain. I plan on using this psychological phenomenon for my personal transformation. Sometimes actors are unable to let go of the emotions associated with their characters. This boundary blurring can result in them carrying a role into everyday life with negative effects. One acting teacher described how a gentle, polite male student became rude and aggressive during the time he played one of the men involved in a reenactment of a murder case. The teacher had to point out to him that seepage seemed to be taking place between him and the character. Playing this character made his real personality change. And that's a good thing if your character was someone you actually wanted to be and was better than the real you. And here is a quote of Jim Carrey in his interview with Variety about his film Man in the Moon and what he experienced playing those characters. It was definitely an important moment in the process where I found myself subjugating Jim Carrey for Andy Kaufman and Tony Clifton. And then at the end of it, looking for Jim Carrey again and having trouble finding him. I was kind of watching from another place. This is a clear indication of neurological change. This is the proverbial effect of intense method acting on some actors. Method acting is an intricate technique that actors use to emotionally identify with their characters, to become their characters, not merely play them. It makes their performances more believable on screen. My cousin controlled a serious drug problem by us making her a fictional character named Rochelle. Acting somehow immediately circumvented her old destructive neurological patterns and made it effortless to change because she literally felt like a different person when she was dressing, behaving, and walking differently, and speaking and thinking from someone else's perspective, that someone being Rochelle. She changed everything that made her recognizable. I plan on doing the same, and some. Some athletes and entertainers do a lesser form of this with creating alter egos to overcome their own limitations and improve their performances. Difference is with an alter ego, you snap in and out of character. I'm trying to create something more permanent. What if I could build a fictional character and use what actors view as a negative psychological byproduct of intense acting and use it to change my life? Instead of going crazy, I harness this transformational power to become great. My theory is, if I take the techniques that actors use to become their characters to an extreme enough level and apply the right psychological concepts, I'll be able to neurologically hijack my own brain to purposefully manipulate it. Since actors lose themselves in roles, I'll use that power to lose and erase myself and design a character that I need to be in order to fix my failing health, my finances, my bad personality traits, and my severe depression and anxiety. There will be little to no remnants of Jarrell in the end.
Weekly, I'll show my life struggles, the hard process of creating my character, not breaking character daily, me testing out classic psychological concepts to amplify results, and you watch me flesh out the mysterious science behind why this whole crazy idea will work when nothing else has for me. I'm building an entire life around this person that I'm constructing. Get ready. You're going to see me do some really weird shit, beginning with changing my name, legally. You're welcome to follow me on this ambitious science experiment. If it fails, I'll lose everything. You saw a Brandon Carter, man. Who the fuck is this? What number is that, nigga? 165. Hello? Don't call don't no, don't call my phone anymore. Alright? No, that's it. These Spanish girls. Dude, blow my phone up. <laughs> Alright. I'm feeling a lot of trepidation. About gonna go do this right now. I feel really emotional. It didn't feel real until I got down here. I'm not gonna cry. Why would I cry? That wouldn't make sense. I'm gonna cry like a bitch tonight. Come on. Like a whole bitch. These are, these are my papers right here. This is my old disgusting name right there. And this is what I'm changing it to. Ah, oh, man. I'm putting like a block between who I was and who I'm trying to become. And to never go back to that place psychologically is gonna be very, it's scary. Okay, man, why am I doing this again? Okay, uh, I feel like I gotta, I'm gotta. i not gonna be able to change until I do this. I'm creating social pressure, public accountability for myself, doing something very drastic to force myself into action because nothing else has worked. So I've, I'm willing to try anything to pull myself out of this destructive hole that I'm in. I don't care if kissing a, kissing a moose in the mouth every morning was the key to me feeling better. I'm about to literally like kill a part of myself. That's what it feels like. There's so much history to drill that I have to like let go to move forward. A bunch of bullshit. It's a bunch. It ain't bullshit. It's, nah, you're real, it's real life shit. It's nah, just that it's, it's all trash. It's it's pulling me down. It's all trash. It's always been trash. You're letting <sighs> go of the trash parts of yourself. You're getting rid of the part of the person that's, that's affected been holding by that. You. It's like removing a tumor. Right. That dies. It's great. It's great when tumors die. Right. Because all they do is try to kill their host. All right, the first thing to do is change my name because that's step one to building a character, followed by changing my personality, adding some quirks, changing my appearance and my voice and so forth. Oh, and I forgot to add the other reasons why I changed my name. So number two is when people call me this, it'll be a constant reminder. It's like serves as a verbal cue to reinforce the traits that I'm trying to display when somebody refers to me as Aureus. The third reason is I had to figure out something really big to push me into action because I've been lazy my whole fucking life. So I'm, I don't like to be humiliated. I had to figure out a way to leverage humiliation. So if I go through all of this, I change my name, I have my friends referring to me as this, and at the end of it, the experiment fails and my life is still fucked up. I'm gonna look real stupid. I don't wanna look stupid. Now, someone else also asked me, out of all names, why did you choose the name Aureus? Unfortunately, there's not a real deep reason. I wish there was. I went, I like Greek mythology, Roman mythology. I looked through a list of names. I said that name and I felt it vibrate through my whole body. It felt strong. Watch. My name is Aureus King. I feel like I could summon lightning or throw a Hadouken or something like that when I say that name. Emerges from the smoke. He emerges from the smoke. All right, don't get a ticket while I'm out here. My friend said the minute that he called me Aureus, I spoke with more clarity and confidence. Tell you the truth, man. I don't know if he's gonna go through with it. Like, you're turning in the paperwork to take one of the biggest steps of your entire life. I was born with a huge name. I was born with the name Caesar. My name is so huge and has carried 
with with it such such grandiose implications. It's going to be tough for me to fill fill the shoes of my name. I'm kind of in a situation where I'm growing into a name. You are named something that you're growing out of. So I I, I walk around with this huge shell. Like if, if it's like a hermit crab, like I walk around with this huge conch shell that I'll probably never grow into. And you were given a shell this big and now you're this big. It, it's apparent that the smallness of who you're letting go of is is dying. And, and the bigness of who you're becoming is thriving. But um, you demonstrate it every day. Your will to live on, to press on, to continue on, to keep on keeping on and maintain the integrity of who you are is uh, nothing short of heroic. That's coming from a hero. <laughs> Not just knowing your story, but also being so close to your story. I have to say to you, brother, I am honored to call you my friend. I'm honored to address you by anything that you choose to be called. Array is fits. I think it's necessary and I think it's great. I'm proud of you. I'm proud of um, what you've grown into as a man. I'm proud to know you. Congratulations. <laughs>do you want the social security card? Yeah, number two is out. And another form of ID? Three is out. It's eight and counter 18. And of course, you know, I had, I've had, I had a lot of moments of doubt as I was preparing to change my name. But then I experienced a lot of serendipitous moments or just weird coincidences that made me feel like I should still go for it, but it was a difficult process. The judge for my name here and had the same name of my late grandmother, Lorna. And I saw this name at the gym. Shit, it was close enough. And the lost friend from years ago reached out during this period and she had recently changed her name as well. I wanted to be embarrassed as fuck. It's like, what are you here for? I'm, um, name change. I'm just Here's my name. <laughs> All right, see so you filed for bank. Do you have your bankruptcy papers? Oh, sir, keep this shit down, please. And I gotta go to my glorious job. Oh, I can't wait. I can't wait. Damn it, I can't wait to go to work tonight. I'm so positive and I have so much gratitude. Man. I knew me, you knew I had to. I appreciate you uh, accompanying me on this journey. It better work out, and if it works out, then be, you're gonna be part of the method and we're gonna sell it for $10,000. Appreciate you, brother. can't always solve your problems with the same brain that created them, right? I, McMaster University in Canada did a study where they put people in an MRI machine and they told them to make decisions based on, uh, make decisions based on the characters of Romeo and Juliet. And what they saw is that when they were doing this, that the area of the brain that has the identity or your personality was suppressed in this, uh, I believe the prefrontal cortex. So the 
Dr. Brown, who led the study, said, it's like when you're acting, you are suppressing yourself, almost like the character is possessing you. And to a degree, that's, that's you know, what I'm trying to do. Now, I know what people say, oh, you know, you, you, you're trying to change yourself, just be yourself. Listen, be yourself is, is fucking bad advice a lot of times. Being myself has gotten me into this predicament that I'm in. So maybe being myself is the problem. That's not good advice for me. Being myself has fucked my life up. And you got to understand what being yourself even means. What does that statement even mean? Do you, who are you? How do you even know that? Most of us, all of us, we were designed indirectly. We didn't design ourselves, our environment, our upbringing, the way society treated us, our schooling, our whatever programming we got that was um, absorbed through osmosis. We didn't, I wasn't designed by myself because I was designed without my permission. I didn't have any say so in this person that I became. I didn't have any say so in how I was treated and where I was brought up and and how much money we had and and just a, a bunch of things. So this is my way of wiping my slate clean so I can build and design the person that I want to be. Because at this point at 33, I'm not who I want to be. If you ain't figured it out, if being yourself hasn't gotten you anything by the age of 33, it's probably not going to work. So you got to try something different. Because being me, being me, boy, is making me a fucking failure and a broke motherfucker. Ass. I got to do something fast or I'm not going to survive. I visited the doctor over 50 times in the past few years, literally. The stress of life, mistakes, everyone I love dying and living the life I hate to exist in is taking a massive toll on me mentally and physically. Who I am at this moment is not the person that I need to be in order to change my life. Like, it don't stop. Like, literally in the middle of talking about my problems, I fucking gotta come to the hospital before work. And then it's like too late and then it's pounding. Just look, because it's a choice between you not wanting at this point in your life to be on a drug and allowing the adrenaline right. to damage your heart, right. especially given your young age. Right. I mean, both in terms of the fact of we want you to have a long life. And so you want to come up with the oh, treatment plan, whether it involves medications or not, that's right. going to maximize you having a nice long life. Right. Precise term is the one that we actually put down as your diagnosis, which is dilated dilated cardiomyopathy, which means that the heart is not pumping ideally, it is somewhat um, dilated or more on the stretched out side. So as it, at each contraction, the heart's supposed to come in nicely, squeeze all the blood out and then open. In your case, it's staying more here rather than coming all the way in each contraction. Can I have a patient I want to schedule with Dr. Adsick? Just a new patient or a follow-up? New patient. What instrument? Affinity. We don't take affinity. Oh, great. Is there any way for him to see him elsewhere? Let's get his degree at shitty insurance. Get your machine done. No. It's much harder to find a good doctor. I don't agree. So what what about Dr. Crook? Does he take it? Alright, thanks. Uh, this guy is really good, but I don't know if he's come in. Oh hey, I was just thinking, what about Shetty? Does he take affinity? He doesn't. Alright, thank you. Is she done next door? She did a blower. No. Okay. But um, Waterman needs an EKG. Uh, And then I need vitals to press the weight. So what is it? Do they not get paid quickly enough with the affinity? That does drive a lot of it. Is that why they need? It's not a quickly, it's how much. Um, 
not even recently, this is for a while. I didn't really discuss it very much, but this I'm being becoming really obsessed with death. Mm -hmm. I don't know what mm -hmm. it is overwhelming, but I cannot stop thinking about it. It is very so overwhelming. So what are some of the thoughts? I just not knowing what happens. Like, okay, what is your purpose? If what if when you die that is it? Mm -hmm. Like I don't wanna die from old age. I wanna I don't want to die from a violent act either, but I want to know when I'm going. I don't want to just let... I can't imagine being 80 and not knowing. Like, you know you probably have two or three years left if you're 80 or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't know what your day is going to be. Whenever you go to sleep, that's going to be your last...